So we come to the talk this morning. If uh, you were here last week or online last week, you'll know that we've uh, started a new series looking at the early chapters of St. John's Gospel. And uh, in our service last week, uh, we looked uh, at Jesus, the Word of God. She's getting her own back on me now. That's what it is. So we looked last week at Jesus, the the word of God, and we said that Jesus uh, is the eternal word who has existed with God from the beginning, that he is the creative word through whom everything uh, that we see was made, and that he is the incarnate word, God in the flesh, that Jesus came to live among us, fully God and fully human, This week, our subject is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lamb of God. You've probably noticed how in our fields at the moment, uh, there are lots of lambs being born. And we breed lambs for food in this country. So did the Israelites all those years ago. But they also used many of their lambs in sacrifice. For instance, every morning and every evening in the temple in Jerusalem, they would sacrifice a lamb for the sins of the people. And so when John the Baptist refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God, he is using the language of sacrifice. Right here at the start of Jesus' ministry, John the Baptist is telling us, why Jesus came to earth, why he is the incarnate word. He came to be a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Sometimes people think we talk too much in the church about sin. But isn't sin the problem in our world? It has been said that the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. What does that mean? Well, it's laid down for us in the confession from the Book of Common Prayer. We do those things that we ought not to do, and we fail to do those things that we ought to do. The problem with sin is that it separates. Do you remember this diagram, Philip, can you? This diagram, which we saw some weeks ago in our sermons, we said that sin separates, it separates man from God. It puts a barrier between us, a chasm, a gulf. And that's picked up in our baptism service today. Do you repent of the sins, I asked the parents and godparents, the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? The big question for human beings is how can we get right with God? How can we bridge that gap? What can we do about our sin? And the answer, of course, is nothing. There is nothing we can do for ourselves to bridge that gap. But we don't have to, because Jesus has done it for us. Can you flick on to it, please? Go to the next one. Jesus has taken our sin upon the cross, and he bridges the gap for us. Jesus died that we might be reconciled to God. He died in our place. He took the punishment we deserve in order to make us clean and to bring us back to God. That's why John the Baptist says, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin 
of the world. So if Jesus has done it for us, is there nothing that we have to do? Well, yes, there is. There is something we have to do. We have to turn to God. We have to turn to God. The baptism service, if we could just have the, did I put it in the slide from the baptism service? Maybe I didn't. Um, the baptism service is um, very clear. Um, it says this, do you reject the devil? Do you renounce evil? Do you repent of the sins which separate us from God? Do you turn to Christ? There they are. Those decisions or declarations, as they're sometimes called. What is it we have to do? We have to turn. We have to turn to Christ. Turning is at the heart of the baptism service. Turning is at the heart of the Christian faith. Turning is at the very heart of the gospel, the good news. Where's Naomi sitting? Ah, can, you, can, can you come and help? I would call out a child if there was a small child here, but uh, <laughs> my wife, uh, otherwise, yes. Uh, can you come and be God? Stand up on those steps. Oh, will she, will she still be in the picture if she's up there? Yeah. yeah, good. So I've asked Naomi to be God in this example. And Naomi, I want you to hold out your hands as if you're calling me to come to you. What's the problem here? What, what is the, the issue? Why am, why, am, why am I not going towards Naomi? Because I have my back turned to her, don't I? I have my back turned on God. I don't want to go God's way. I want to go my own way. I want to do my own thing, be my own boss. And the Bible says that's what sin is. It's putting I in the middle. Sin has an I in the middle. Putting up myself at the center of everything. That's what sin is. Turning our backs on God and walking away from God. What do I need to do to walk towards God? I need to turn. And that's why turning is at the heart of the gospel. And there he is. Uh, there he is. God's calling me to come to him. <laughs> thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thanks very much for being willing to help. Um, that's why turning is at the heart of the gospel, because God is there calling us to come and receive his free gift. The free gift of salvation, the free gift of that bridge, Christ taking our sins upon himself, taking upon him the sin of the world. That's what he asks us to do, to turn to him and say, I no longer want to go my way, Lord, but I want to go your way. And that's why in the baptism service, the last two declarations were about turning to Christ and then receiving Christ as saviour and receiving Christ as Lord. And if Jesus has the answers, if Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, if Jesus is the one through whom we can be forgiven and know God, why wouldn't we want to turn to him? That is the question we have to ask ourselves, each and every one of us. If he has the words of eternal life, why wouldn't we want to turn to him? Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks that you came to earth to die for us, knowing that there was no other way to save us from our sins. Lamb of God, you died for us. Help us to live for you. Amen.